you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello, friends, and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I trust that all of you had a blessed, blessed Easter. And uh, we're going to proceed from what happened when the Lord went up into the heavens and he said, If I go away, I will come again. Oh, we can look forward to that, can't we? And uh, the disciples wondered, you know, what in the world that would involve. And so they wanted some signs pointing to the, his return one day. So the Lord did not leave us, leave us ignorant, that's for sure. But he has explained what we're going to be talking about today. The signs that we are seeing right now, friends, point to the coming of the Lord. Isn't that right, Jack? Oh, the signs? definitely, Rexella. We are right at the door of Christ's return. It's so near, I can almost hear the knock. And I mean that, ladies and gentlemen. We've been waiting for over 2,000 years since Jesus left, but he said, I'm coming again, and it's going to happen, and soon. Now, you know, Jack, there are so many signs in the Bible, thank the Lord, because it all has reference to where we are today and things going on in the world today relevant to our lives. But, uh, Jack, this morning you were reading some wonderful passages about the coming of the Lord and the signs pointing to the coming of the Lord. Could yeah. you share that with us? Matthew 24, beginning verse 3. It states so powerfully, When Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, that you be not troubled. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted, shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my sake. And many shall be offended and shall betray one another. But whosoever shall endure unto the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, to all nations. And then shall Christ return. Oh, Hallelujah. Right, right. I'm going to deal with that today. I love that yeah. passage of Scripture. All right, Jack. Uh, now, he named many, many things there, friends, and we're going to take them sort of one at a time. Is that right, Jack? Yeah, sure. One at a time. The first one, false Christ and false prophets. Take a look at this. Among evangelicals, a growing divide as their numbers dwindle. Oh, I don't like that. Fundamentalists are torn between taking a hard line or changing, changing with the times. Oh, my, oh, my. And then rapture, antichrist, and tribulation. All of those are referring to, you know, what, what we were saying. Actually, the antichrist are taking over and trying to lead us in the wrong direction there, Jack. How about that? Oh, Rex, it's going to get terrible in this world. Second Timothy 4, to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables and unto damnable heresies and unto doctrines of devils. And God help us, it's infiltrating the Church of Jesus Christ right now, and it's even going on among 17 different Protestant groups who call themselves 
evangelicals and these hypocrites ought to get out of the ministry or get right with God. And I'm talking about Protestant ministers now. Oh, we used to always talk against the Catholic Church. They have more sense on some of these things as some of you guys. Seventeen Protestant denominations preaching air, ungodly air. God forgive you, and as long as I am alive, I'm going to preach what God's Word says. Rebuke the devil, and I will, because that's what you guys are being controlled by. Yes, as Protestant ministers. And by the way, I think I know what's wrong. The Billy Graham magazine just released a sermon that 68% of the Protestant ministers among the evangelicals are steeped in pornography, the lust of the eye, sin. No wonder you can't preach the word of God right, and you're not preaching it right. And as long as I live, I'm going to speak out against you because souls are going to go to hell forever because of you. And if you guys are in the churches when they are preaching, one thing is... Replacement theology that God's through with the Jew forever, and every time the word Israel appears as the church, and every time Jerusalem appears as heaven, bunk! That's a doctrine from the pit of hell, from the devils themselves. And if you're in that church, get out! What? Yeah, come out from among them and be a separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. I am a fundamentalist, and I'm sticking to the book, every word of it. And many of you are even now preaching against the rapture. I'll tell you, I've never seen such apostasy in my life, and I'm going to give it everything I've got till God calls me home. I'm going to expose you religious bozos. You know, False prophets. Dick, it goes right along with that first article among evangelicals, a growing divide. Some people are saying, no, we don't believe in what we used to believe in. Now we're going to progress to something that involves every country in the world. My heart goes out to so many people who are involved with this. Wars and rumors of wars. That's one of the signs. Oh, my, oh, my. Wars and rumors of wars. This comes out of the World Magazine. And then going on, how Russia and China could come unhinged. Whew. That means that they are building and building and the military, and they could become unhinged and release it. My, oh, my. Here's another article. Will China impose a new world order? Oh, Oh, on the cover of Newsweek, Putin is preparing for World War III. Oh, my. Oh, here we go again. Russia's talk about when, not if, but when there's going to be a major war. You know, they're not hiding it. They, they know they're going to be fighting a world war. Waking up to the Iranian threat. All right, now there is China, there's Russia, and now here's Iran also. Saudi crown prince calls Iran supreme leader the new Hitler of the Middle East. And from Japan, North Korea missile tests are imminent threat. Well, now we know that they did this, and now they're kind of pulling back just a little bit. North Korea could launch its own nuclear Pearl Harbor attacking the United States, potentially killing millions. Oh, my, they developed that much. Well, on the cover of The Week magazine, huh, is this a trap for our president? That's what they say. Could it be a trap for the president? Now talking with Kim from France to spend 37 billion euros on upgrading nuclear arsenal. All the countries in the world are upgrading friends. They know there's going to be a world war. Well, how about the United States? Trump pitches Congress massive military, military buildup. Well, thank the Lord that our president knows what's going on around the world, and we're not holding back either. We're building up our arsenal also. Jack, world war. Is there going to be a world war? Second Timothy 3.1. 
in the last day perilous, dangerous time shall come. I go back 60 years now before I've been in the ministry, 72 years. And I was preaching for Dr. Jerry Falwell, who's built the largest Christian college in the world, Liberty. And he became a close friend. And he had me come to his church to preach a number of times. And today he's built one of the largest fundamentalist churches among the Southern Baptists. One of the largest, the biggest, the greatest, and the great school. And I preached that morning on a message God had given to me, the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible. Right. Where, when, why? And 10,000 people showed up. He said, Jack, I've never seen anything like it. This was before he had the big church and big school. He said, God has something for you. Do you have a mailing list? No. Do you have bond search? No. God told me to support you for the next two years. I'll pay all your bills. You go around and preach this message on Russia. He said, if you don't, I taped it this morning. I'm going to get it on record. I'll sell it. <laughs> Good. Make up your mind. He said, as you go out to preach and continue preaching this message to the world, he said, I'll back you with a salary and all the bills until it's done. And I got started. And ladies and gentlemen, I have preached that message scores of times in almost every major city of America and Europe and everywhere. I had many sermons, but I always included this one, the coming war with Russia. Where, when, why, who? And I'm going to tell you something. Sixty years passed. And just now, the Wall Street Journal had a front page article that said, World War Three is coming. And it named exactly the nations I preached. 60 years ago. Exactly. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit came to me on August the 13th, 20 and 27th, and said, God has called you to war in the world that Christ is about to return. And that World War Three is going to break out on the face of the earth. And then I said, I picked up this Wall Street Journal, and I said, that's it. I've said that for 60 years. They heard me preach it all over America and Canada and other countries. Everyone knows I've been the one to say it. And ladies and gentlemen, the latest reports are the generals of America said this very war could start by next January. Jesus said, I'm going to come again. And nobody will know the day and the hour, but you will know when it's near, even at the door. And I can hear the knock already. God, the Holy Spirit, has come to me August 13, 2027. He spent now eight months with me, and he's indoctrinated me, he's shown me great and unusual things. You know how this Bible was written? Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's happened to me. This whole book, and I'm going to shock some of you. It is not the King James Version. It is not the Doi Version of the Catholic Church. It's the Jewish Version. Sixty-six books and sixty-four were written by Jews. All the Old Testament rabbis. And then we had 12 apostles. 11 of them were Jews. Only one Greek, Luke. He wrote Luke and Acts. 66 books in the Bible, 64 written by Jews. And you guys are preaching replacement theology that God is true with the Jew forever. And that every time you come across the word Israel, you put it at the church. And every time you come across 
Jerusalem he put in heaven. You loony tunes. Get out of the ministry. You false Christ and false prophets. God says, I'm going to give to Israel an everlasting name. Amen. And since they wrote 64 books of this Bible out of 66, almost everything you read is Jewish. And God through them, I'll give Israel an everlasting name. How long is everlasting? It's as long as the eternal life you preach. And if it's over forever for them, it's over forever. Forget your preaching of eternal life. I'm going to preach eternal life because I am preaching that Israel will never cease to exist. And I've got seven messages coming up starting the 14th of next month. And the last two are when Christ returns to the earth to set up his kingdom. Two full sermons on what he sets up. And it's called the kingdom. And the Holy Ghost that preach on the kingdom. And the final church is found in also this 24th chapter. He says the church will cease. That's dispensation number six. How can they? When we're raptured, he calls up the dead in Christ and all the living in Christ. When we go bodily, who's in the whole church services on Sunday? They're gone. And they're right. gone for seven years. <laughs> and seven years later, Christ, it's not the end of the world. The world's never going to end. He comes back and sets up his kingdom in Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv. Jerusalem. That's God's holy city. Jesus, when he left here, said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he's prepared the holy city, 1,500 miles long, wide and high. And on the top, it has a sign, the new Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv. Somebody said to me the other day, what's wrong with that Trump? He says he's going to give the Palestinians uh, another place to live because they've got to give up that place they captured or fought with it, and Jews got it, and you won't give it to them. It belongs to the Jew. God sets up his kingdom for a thousand years in Jerusalem with a holy city hanging over, says the new Jerusalem. I think that's pretty well informing the world that Jerusalem belongs to the Jew, no one else. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. Only two signs had to happen. And on the week of the 14th and on, I'm preaching the great message about Jerusalem. And the final two signs have arrived. And Jesus said, you won't know the day there, but when you see these two signs, that's the generation that's going to be alive for my coming to set up my kingdom on earth forever and forever and ever because the world will never end. Anybody who's preaching in the world doesn't know anything about the Bible. The Bible says it's a world without end, Old and New Testaments. I'm not going to take time to prove it now. You don't believe it, I'll tell you about it soon. Okay, where are we going? This great war is about to happen, and I've preached it for 60 years in America. I've been in it now 72 years. It's Ezekiel 38 39. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. Gog is the ruler of Rush. That's Russia in the Greek and Russia in English. But there are other cities there, Magog and Meshek. Meshek is Moscow. Magog is about the Megagites, and they are the Cynthia the people. Uh, he calls about Tubal there. That's Tobolsk. That's there in Russia right now, in southwestern Russia. And then it mentions Gomer. That's Germany. That's going to go with them for the greatest war in history. And it talks about Egypt and Libya. They are hooking up right now to Garma is Turkey. And right now, yeah. We've got articles that Turkey's going to go with it. Every nation is lined up for World War III, and the Bible says there should be wars and rumors of wars. 
nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet God because when it happens, we're gone in the twinkling of an eye, the rapture. I will keep you from, not through, preservation, ek, out of the hour of testing, World War Three, that comes on the whole world. How? Come up hither, Revelation 4.1, and we go up in 11 one hundredths of a second, the twinkling of an eye, to miss the war. And seven years later, the last battle is being fought called Armageddon. And he comes back, and we have new bodies that can never die again. And all the armies are defeated. A river of blood 200 miles long. And, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, the Bible says that it will take the believers seven solid months to bury the dead. Hmm. Russia. Now, who's with them? China, North Korea, Iran. They're all part of the big package. Exactly what the Wall Street Journal said. It's coming and coming soon. Prepare to meet your God. Amos 4, 12. Prepare. God has called me to be the final prophet. He's been with me for eight months. And just this morning he said, you are to be the final prophet to warn the world. Jesus is about to break through the blue. Mm. Uh, oh, Julian, it looks like so many, so many prophecies are being fulfilled and uh, signs are being fulfilled. Well, you know one thing, I sort of hate to give you this next sign, and it has to do with the persecution of Christians. Persecution of Christians. All right, here's a headline. China urges rural Christians to replace Jesus' images with Xi Jinping. Oh, my word. Of course, that's the, the uh, president of China. They want to replace Jesus with him. Muslim father in Uganda drives son from home for becoming a Christian. Here's again. Christians in India praise God in spite of the police brutality. And a month in jail, if you talk about the Lord, going on. Church of Sweden to stop clergy from calling God he or the Lord in bid to crack down on gendered language. They just don't want him to be a he or a she. They want him because to be Because they offend the homosexuals. God forgive them. All right, going on. Kidnapped girl refuses to convert to Islam. Now there were a hundred and ten girls kidnapped. Oh my in Nigeria. And uh, she said, I will die for the Lord before I convert to Islam. Well, her mother had this to say, I'm very sad, but I'm also overjoyed because my daughter did not denounce Christ. Praise oh. the Lord for this precious little black girl. Yes, and then... And I'll tell you, we've got kids over here, and God in the Ten Commandments says they are going to be ungodly at home. They'll not read. Listen to a word their mothers and fathers will say. That's one of the Ten Commandments. It's number five. All right, I got one more here, Jack. New ISIS video. Uh oh, sings to U.S. jihadists. It is now time to rise, slit their throats, and watch them die. Americans. Oh, my. That's my. the warning. And let me tell you this. All right. right now, Michigan, where I'm living, has more ISIS people than all the rest, but they're in all 50 states, and they have four laws. We have Ten Commandments, and ours are godly commandments. There's number one, you kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Number two, you kill your son if he's a homosexual, and all homosexuals. Number three, you kill anyone in your own religion, and they're talking about their own Islam, if he says Christ is God, or if he says one word against Allah, Muhammad, or the Quran. Number four, you kill everybody but Muslims. Oh, my everybody, yeah. And guess what? Get punished for it? Not in their religion. He got 72 voluptuous virgins to have sex with all through eternity. God forgive that pagan religion. 
I'm under death threats, but I am now. I've prepared. I got every one of my sermons, 4,000 of them ready and taped. And they're all in order. My 10 member board says we'll carry on if you die either by age because of your coming close to 90 and because of death threats. I'm ready to go. But my voice will be carried on for all years till Jesus arrives. That's been the commandment. The Holy Spirit came to my house August the 13th and he's been with me for eight months telling me, guiding me. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And it's happened to me. Praise the Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I'm ready to meet you. <laughs> and the crowns and rewards are passed out. I like that say, uh, what you said, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And what you said right after that, I'm ready to meet you. Friends, are you ready to meet the Lord? Have you opened your heart to the Lord? Have you said, Lord, I know that you are the Savior of the world. I cannot have peace without you. I cannot have assurance of eternal life in heaven without you. Friends, will you please open your heart to Jesus, Savior of the world. And as Jack prays this prayer right now, will you say, Lord, come into my heart and be my Savior. Oh, Jack, our time goes so quickly, but would you please pray that wonderful prayer of salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quran says, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you will burn in hell forever. God forgive these irreligious blind people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Holy Bible. And 400 times it says that Jesus is the only way to be saved. And it's through his blood 700 times. 1100 times. Forget what the Quran says. This is God's word. Amen. Thy word is truth. And you know how you can get there? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Forever and forever and forever. World without end. Pray it right now. Jesus, thank you for this message. Thank you for this enlightenment. Thank you for what I feel in my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. And I'm going to accept all 400 of the verses under one title. Christ is the only way. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've hurt you. I've grieved you. I've sinned against you. And now I ask for forgiveness. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Savior today. Amen. 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 I'll never forget the day I opened my heart to the Lord. What joy, what peace in knowing he walks with me. Now, if you pray that prayer, write to me. I'll be happy to send you a little book of first steps in a new direction because the Lord will walk with you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to look forward to being with you again next week. Please let us hear from you. If you opened your heart, and please let us hear from you if your hearts are being blessed. Join us every single week. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. The more you read the Bible, get it out. Oh, yes, get it out. The more you read the Bible, the more you'll love its author. Look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, believe that God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.